Hi, I'm Kristen Oviedo, and today we're going to talk about the relationship between a meteorite's diameter and its crater size on land. Most of you have some idea that the size of a meteorite is going to affect how big of a crater it leaves on land, and that is true, but today we're going to talk about the three specific attributes of a meteorite that are actually going to affect that crater size. So the first one we're going to talk about is mass, or M for short. So a lot of times you're given the diameter of a meteorite and asked to find the crater size, but it turns out that's not quite enough information to go on because ultimately you're going to need the mass, not the diameter. And you can get the mass from the diameter, but the math that's required to do that is a little bit outside of our scope. And it also depends on the chemical composition of the meteorite itself. Um, basically, meteorites can either be iron, like metallic, um, they can be made of silica or rocky, or they can be some combination of those two. So if a meteorite is more or less dense, it's ultimately going to have a different mass, even if it's the same size as a, a different meteorite that has a different makeup. So let's assume that you're given the diameter, you find the chemical composition, and you get the mass out of that. Then you're ready to move on to the second attribute, which is the velocity or how fast the meteorite is actually going when it hits the Earth. V for velocity. So it turns out that physicists constantly run into this problem where they want to figure out how much destructive power a moving object has. And that depends on the mass and the velocity. But you know you have to take them into account in slightly different proportions. And so they've come up with this quantity called kinetic energy that will allow them to directly compare uh, different objects of different sizes and speeds and how much raw destructive power they have. So right now I'm going to show you a really simple equation relating those two things together so we can figure out directly how it relates to crater size. So once again, this is a physics equation, but don't get scared because it's actually uh, pretty simple. You just take your velocity and you square it, you multiply that by your mass, and then you take that number and divide it by 2, and that's it. Then you get the K, or kinetic energy. Once again, that is the measure of the raw destructive power that that meteorite is going to have. Those were the first two attributes that we talked about. The third one is actually the angle that the meteorite comes in and hits the ground at. So uh, the shape of the crater is usually going to be round almost no matter what angle uh, the meteorite comes in at. And it turns out that the craters are usually circular because the shock wave that occurs after the impact happens um, is approximately equal in all directions. It actually has very little to do with the size or, sh or sorry, the shape of the meteorite. So most meteorites are, you know, really random shapes. They're not perfectly spherical, and yet most of them can leave a pretty circular crater. So it turns out that there's only a few very shallow angles that the meteorite will leave anything but a circular crater. And those angles are all less than about 20 degrees as measured from the ground. So anything less than that. So now that we've talked about those three attributes, uh, we can safely say that the mass and velocity are going to be the primary things that will determine the depth and the width of the crater. And the angle is going to be what determines the actual shape, which will usually be circular, once again, except for anything less than this angle. So I'm Kristen Oviedo, and that is how you determine the relationship between a meteorite's diameter and its crater size on land.